Okay, I've been reading a lot about uh, big investors such as George Soros comes to mind who have been um, doubling down on their hedges against the S&P, worried that we might see a correction. But you've got a couple, you say that's complicated, that sounds simple to me, but you've got a couple of ways uh, that the little guy can get on this and hedge their bets. Sure, right. So George Soros is using derivatives options, right? There's also the VIX and there's that they track futures. So these are non-derivative ways to sort of hedge against the market. The first one, plain vanilla, very boring, is the iShares 20 plus year treasury bond ETF, otherwise known as TLT. Very simple, holds a bunch of long dated treasuries. I did the numbers though, when you start to run the numbers and look at say the last little rough patch in late July, yeah. the market was down 2.3%, this was up 2%, TLT. And when you look at the 16 days that made up that patch, TLT moves in the opposite direction 13 of those days. So it's a very non-correlated way to offset your, your, uh, your risk. The other thing is if you go back to 2008, and this is pretty shocking I think to most people, the market was down, the last time the market really was down big. It was down 37% in 2008. TLT was up 33%. So you almost offset your all your losses. Com contrastly, gold was only up 3% that year. I think some people think gold was up a lot more. It didn't go down, but it was not up to the point where treasuries was almost like an inverse to the market. Uh, in any time frame you look at it, it does a good job of diversifying. Interesting. Okay, and you have an ETF also uh, that will hedge if you think gold is going to see a bit of a correction. Sure. Some people just have to have gold, right? Yeah. So if you are looking at the gold side, IAU, which is the iShares Gold, it's the less popular one. I, this one is interesting, though, for investors because this one is charges less than GLD, the big one. This one mm -hmm. charges 0.25% per year. GLD charges 0.4%. And that adds up. Over time, that expense ratio kind of nibbles away at your return. So if you look at IAU, since it launched in 2005, it's actually outpacing GLD by 1.8%. Not a lot, but all else equal, if this stuff, you know, two ETFs that store gold in a vault, you might as well go with the cheaper one. Interesting. Um, and you've also got one from PIMCO, who is having trouble yeah. uh, on a totally unrelated matter that you'll hear much more on Street Smart about uh, in a few minutes. Uh, a PIMCO enhanced short maturity ETF. Sure. This is like saying, I'm just going to go on the sidelines. It's like cash. I call it a money market fund with a little kick. Okay. Because they go into corporates and they go into some foreign bonds, but it's all investment grade and it's all with durations of a year or less. So it does have you a yield of just under a percent, right? Yeah. And it actually returns about, you know, 70 basis points. That is a lot more than nothing, which is what money markets give you. That does sound pretty good. And just very quickly, finally, um, what, what, what's the advantage of having these derivative-free ETFs? Why do you want no synthetics? Because with derivatives, you have to manage those positions. And yeah. if you don't manage them right, especially in the futures uh, market with like the VIX, uh, you're going to roll from one month to the next and get killed by contango. And you, you, a lot of there's surprises contango, in the Contango, my favorite word.